inverse variation in unitary method. Okay, so let's understand what does this mean, right? Now you saw something in the direct method in some of the previous videos. Let us see what is meant in case of indirect or inverse variation. Now if you notice in certain cases what happens is that one thing, let's say there are two variables A and B. And the most common example given is that of speed and time. Okay, so let's say if the speed decreases, okay, so let's say you were driving at 60 miles per hour, right, and you decrease your speed from 60 to 40. At 60 miles per hour you covered a distance in one hour, but then you decreased your speed, right, so it's a basic thing that you are going to take what? You are take, going to take more time. Whereas if the same speed would have increased to 80, the time taken would have been less than one hour. Right? It's just like, you know, um, if your writing speed is fast, okay, you take less time. But if it is slow, you take more time to complete your examination paper, right? So in these cases, what happens is that instead of a direct correlation, wherein one thing increases, so the other also increase, what happens is the situation is a little different if one increases, the other goes down, right? And these are cases are basically known as inverse variation cases of unitary method. Now let us see something in respect of the example which is given. Or maybe let us leave it like this only. Let's kind of just concentrate on this. If a builder can construct a house, so there's a house which has to be constructed by a builder by using 42 people. So there are a set of people who are constructing this house, so 42 people, in 126 days. So when 42 people were working, it took 126 days to complete the house. How many people are required to complete the work in 84 days? Now, basically what are you told? You are told that the number of days has been reduced from 126 to 84, right? Now, given that the number of days has reduced, what will be the impact? So, let's say there were four people who were working to construct this house, right? Suddenly, one of them ran away. So, what will happen? These three poor chaps will together have to complete the work amongst themselves right and the normal rule is that if the number of people has reduced what will be happen to the time obviously they will take more time to build the house or no the answer is yes they'll take more time right so basically these guys no question what you need to notice that the variable which is given which is the number of days has to be taken on the left hand side so let's say we say that in 126 days, 42 people can complete the work, right? But if you have to complete the work in one day, how many people will be required? Obviously, the number of days is getting reduced. So the number of people which is required is bound to increase, right? And how do you increase? You do the increase by multiplication. So we will require 42 into 126 men or people to complete the work in one day. But we need to complete the work in how many days? 84 days. So the number of days is now increasing. Right? So obviously the number of people required will be decreased. And how do you decrease? You do the multiplication. 42 into 126 divided by 84 right so obviously 42 goes off 84 goes off we get 2 here 126 when knocked off with 2 will give you 63 
So you will require 63 people to complete the work in 84 days. Right? Again, how did we come to know this? By using the unitary method. We knew 126 days are required by 42 men. So if you have the work has to be completed in one day, a unitary method will require obviously more number of people. But if the number of days is 84, then we require 42 into 126 divided by 84. Right? You can solve other similar problems using this particular method. Okay? Just remember that the unitary aspect needs to be found out for the variable which is given. The unknown variable has to be on the right-hand side. 